Hello, welcome everyone to week 10. My camera seems a little fuzzy. Sorry if I seem fuzzy to you. I'm not fuzzy in real life. In fact, I wish I was fuzzier, but uh, my face does not allow me to uh, be a fuzzy person, which um, is one of the great disappointments of my life. I had, as a kid, I had this uncle who looked like a uh, yard gnome, and uh, he had this beard and his hair, and that was my aspiration as a kid. I just wanted to look like Uncle Larry when I got older. And, uh, what sucks about setting a goal for something that's genetic, uh, when it becomes genetically impossible to achieve such a goal, there's nothing you can do to will yourself to make it there. So then you're just filled with a sense of eternal, you know, uh, failure. Oh, well, I rebounded pretty quickly once I came to terms that I would never be a fuzzy bearded man. Oh, well, or a, a man who's taller than five, seven. So, ah, it is what it is. Okay. All right. So let's get to this. Um, let's see here. Okay. So this week, uh, you are going to be doing, uh, you, you will be peer editing someone's paper and doing the final edits of your own paper. The peer edit uh, form is located in the week 10 folder. Okay, you can click on this. This is also where you submit this. Um, so you will need to go to, once you download the rubric, okay, which I have, I want to show it to you in a second. Let's see. All right, once you download the rubric, you need to go back to the discussion posts, which I believe I have a link in week nine. Here we go. And you need to claim someone's essay. Okay, you can say, like, oh, hey, Jada, Jada, I'm going to grade, I'm going to edit your paper. So you would click on their paper and you would have replied to them saying, I'll edit it or not edit, a peer review. It's a peer review. It's not the same as editing um, because all you're doing is reviewing it. You're not actually editing it at all. Uh, you review it. You look at uh, the, the top should look the same, should be very familiar. Um, oh, dang it, it's not 1102, it's 1101. Let's see it. Um, check that their formatting is correct. All this is correct. Heading, double spaced, okay. Um, left are justified alignment, okay. Then, see this, this is what makes this outline a little bit different than the previous ones. Is that like, you're not going by, uh, you're not going paragraph by paragraph, all right? Um, because this is did not have the same type of outline. Like the essay itself was not outlined the same way that the first essay was, okay? So uh, the bare minimum requirements was that like you have, that there is a topic in general, okay? Um, so the essay needs to have one major topic. And then here you review which of the following styles does the essay include. Only has to include one of these, but up to all three. So when I explain the essay two description, okay, um, needs to be at least there needs to be a cause and effect paragraph somewhere, um, or a comparison contrast paragraph somewhere, or a classification paragraph somewhere. Not every single paragraph has to be one of these sometimes you might have to use definition you might need it to define your terms in order to compare and contrast them which is fine you could have spent a paragraph defining one term another paragraph defining another term and then you compare and contrast them in a third paragraph okay it was up to you how you wanted to go about this um as long as there's at least one paragraph that is either cause and effect 
comparison and contrast, and or classification, okay? So the topic of the paper, there should only be one topic of the paper. This whole paper should be about something, okay? Um, and then there should be at least a paragraph. So like I was reading someone's essay um, and I could be like, okay, there's no comparison contrast. I mean, cause and effect. There's no comparison contrast, but there is a classification paragraph. Cool. They have met that one requirement. As long as there's at least one yes on here. Um, now, I didn't add the little comments, okay, because I really wanted, I wanted to try to keep this as one page, but uh, you could add, uh, you can still add comments. Just because I didn't put that there, you can copy and paste that, and you can write in comments to this person, okay? Because I didn't include it doesn't mean that you don't that you can't say anything. All right. It's okay to think outside the box and do a little bit of additional stuff. Next two requirements for the for the essay was that you'd have two sources. The writers had had two sources. So you as the reader are reading their essay to see if they if they utilize outside sources. So if they use a, a source, you need to write what that source is. Okay. Um, so, like for example, I'm gonna pull a uh, an essay one example. Let's just imagine this essay one is actually like their their paper. Okay, um, you would read their their paper and look for a source that was like used. Let's see. Oh wait, this might be the wrong. This might be a um. From um, that's a one a example. Yeah. All right, Lisa. What source did you use? All right, here. So, like the journal of. Let's say this is their essay two. Let's just imagine. Okay, we're imagining. If that is their essay two, then you go to their peer review sheet and you just write that in essay uh, in, in the source one. Um, okay. And then you go back to where they use that source and you would see is it integrated into actual uh, sentence? You know, did they um, integrate their quotes? Uh, let's see. Okay, so like, let's, let's see, we're looking at this essay, okay? This is a quote. Notice this. See how, how this sentence begins with a period? There's a period and there's a quotation mark. They are used to non-invasively and painlessly help to diagnose disease and monitor therapy, support medical, blah, 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 blah. And then there's a period. That quote is not integrated. It begins with quotation marks and it ends with a period. That quote is not integrated. So you'd go to there to the peer to review rubric. Okay. And you would integrate into a sentence. No, it's not. It's not integrated. Now, the author is either cited in the sentence or in the parenthetical citation. Well, it's not. We'll go back. There is no author. See that? Who said this quote? Do we know who said this quote? We don't. We have no idea who said this quote. Who said it? I don't know. There's no there's no there's no author being used. So I'll go back to my SA2 peer review sheet. And out it, nope, nope. Is the source listed in the works cited page? Well, when you don't know the author, that makes it pretty difficult to then know which one is listed. 
Okay. Not sure. So you could write either no, because you don't know, or again, you could write, you, you could type in there and said, not sure, as there, there is no parenthetical citation. And I, if you write a comment, I would highlight it. All right, so source two, let's just say source two is just not even present. There's only one source in the paper. Well, that's a problem. Therefore, it would be no, no, and, but you, you could say though, well, maybe because there are three sources listed on the work cited page. Okay. Like, let's say you were reading this essay. Let's just say, you know, again, we are using our imagination. This essay, this essay is, um, is essay two, and we have one quote. But that's all there is, is just one quote. There's no other quotes, but we have three S, we have three sources here. Okay. That's a problem. Then uh, you go to works at a page. It ends at the very top of the last page. The only sources listed are ones used in the actual essay. The sources are formatted alphabetically. They are formatted with a hanging indent and double space. So it looks like this. Well, if we go back to the essay that we are peer editing, which we're imagining that uh, this is the essay we're peer editing, you notice the works cited page does not begin at the very top of the last page. It is in the middle of this page. So we need to hit enter, 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 enter. Okay. So it would be a no. Alphabetical order, A, C, R, sure, yes. Is it correct formatting though? No, this should be double spaced. Go to, go to paragraph, it's blank, which means that there are errors all in the formatting. If it was correct, it would say zero, zero, That's the way it should look. Has hanging and dent. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, as we are, I've, I've already pointed out, there's three sources here, but only one quote in the essay. So I'm going to go back to my peer review sheet. Works at a page. Begins at the very top. Nope. The only sources listed are ones used in the actual essay. Nope. The sources are formatted alphabetically. Yep. They are formatted with a hanging indent and double spaced. This is called the hanging indent. The first line is not indented, but the subsequent line is indented. Yes. Okay. And then the entire essay is at least 1,200 words. Now, look. Um, this is, okay. Like this essay is 1,200 words. Look down here, you can see it right there, 1,214, okay? Now, it can be 1,200 words or at least Mr. Byers, okay, I associate 1,200 words with three full pages, okay? If this essay ended right here, let's just say like right there, and the works cited page was here, okay? Look, this is 1,100 words, but look, it's three 
full pages. I read this essay, I, I would be fine. Okay. So 1200 is a is safe bet. Um, but like if it's three full pages, I'm not gonna look at because again, like when I look at your essays, I uh don't always see the, the page numbers because uh where you submit them, page number is not uh doesn't appear unless I download it and open it up in Windows uh and then look down here. So really I'm 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 scaling it based on three full pages. Three full pages, I'm good usually. Okay. Um, if it's less than three pages, that's suspect. So with the rubric, maybe I will. I gotta update this thing anyways because I realize I noticed there's some errors. Maybe I'll write something like less is at least twelve hundred words, or three full pages. Okay. Cool. All right. That's it. That's how you do it. You save this. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm highlight everything so I can redo this. Oh my god. No highlighting. Okay. Yay. All right, you save it by the person's name, file, save as. So like, let's say I'm, I was reviewing datas, okay? I would take my rubric, file, save as, then I'd put data, data, SA2 peer review. And then I would upload it here. I'll do it I mean, as in I'll do a reply to Jada and post my review sheet. And then after I post, I get at uh, once after I send Jada the review sheet, I'd go to week 10, click here, and I would drop it. Okay. I would drop it like it was hot to um in order for it to be graded. I am not, I am not grading your discussion post submission. I'm grading what's put in the Dropbox, okay? Um, but you still have to post it on the discussion board because you'd be, it would be cruel not to, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite this, this uh, I updated the file. Make sure y'all have the latest edition. 35. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go over some samples for you of essays one. Things that um that some people did and that other people did not do. Okay. Things that were good and bad. So I was all, I already started going over uh, one of these essays, Henry's essay, let's say, okay. Things about Henry's essay that a lot of people, that many people did. You see this, you see this header? See how it's, it's here when it should be here, okay. Notice this, the essay starts here on this line, the header also. So we need to take that and we need to move it over. Okay. And then you notice that there's this gap here. Look, see how the cursor is blinking right here? That means that there's an additional line. We need to hit delete. Bring that up. Okay. There should be no additional spaces between paragraphs. Let's go down here. Okay, great. Um, I was so I was talking to my wife about about uh you know the MLA stuff for this um for, for the essays, right? And she reaffirmed that 
colleges uh, make it a big deal about uh, formatting. Um, she was a psychology major, and they wrote in um, APA, uh, American Psychological Association formatting. And if they turn a paper with more than five um, errors, more than five formatting errors, formatting errors, five, like like miss the citations are wrong, the uh, works cited page is wrong, there's an error in that, the heading, all this stuff, they failed the paper. Five uh, formatting errors. That's not even including grammar, um, syntax, uh, logical, you know, the ideas behind it, okay, communication, just five formatting errors, and they failed the paper, okay? So, again, my strict focus on MLA is not like Mr. Byers, instructor Byers, okay? This is going at tech emphasis saying you have to learn and master MLA formatting. This is um, the, the university system saying they want all their students, no matter what um, formatting you will learn, whether that is like, like MLA for English and many of the humanities, APA, AP, Chicago. I think those are the main ones. MLA, AP, APA, and Chicago style. Okay. So you might learn more than just MLA. And it really does suck when you start confusing the, the, the styles, which is what a lot of people do. Um, I see a lot of like people come from the business world or come from some other uh, area where, and, or I think a lot of people look up online how, how to cite their sources correctly and they cite the wrong style. I see a lot of like people who put dates in their parenthetical citations. That's, that's APA. APA puts dates because APA, American Psychological Association, dates matter when citing research because um, if you are citing a piece of research from 1956, then there might be a lot of difference now in 2023 versus in MLA, when we're usually we're talking about like poetry and literary analysis, dates don't really care because a, an analysis of Shakespeare in 1932 might still be a valid interpretation of Shakespeare in 2023. Okay. So uh, when I see people put uh, commas and dates in their parenthetical citations, I immediately know you're looking at the wrong type of citation, the wrong, um, uh, the wrong system. You're, you're not looking at MLA, which is what I'm teaching you and what uh, Gwinnett Tech wants you to understand. And what all colleges want you to want, want their freshmen to understand is MLA. So the sides are good. I'm going to do a, a select all. When you do a select all and you click on this little thing for the, for the paragraph, it's blank. That means that there are, are inconsistencies throughout the paper. This should be zero. This should be double. Okay, now we do it again, select all, box. Now it's there, zero, zero, double, see? That means the whole paper is accurate, all right? Okay, uh, this person was using single quotation marks. It's supposed to be double quotation marks. One time you use single quotation marks is when you have a quote within a quote. Okay, like this pair, this right here need to be integrated. And this is what you call a drop quote, which is incorrect. Okay, and then I already went over the works edit page. Let's look at one more before it's time for me to move on. Uh, let's look at the C sample. Okay. Uh, yeah, but y'all didn't know that I have Hillary Swink as a student. He's joking. All right, double click here. Put a space. There we go. I'm gonna do 
select all, I want to check the formatting, uh, go to paragraph. Oh, look, blank. that means there's inconsistencies. Double, zero, zero, double. Okay, now look, there's, there's extra space here. So I'm gonna get rid of that. The title should be centered. Look, it, the person did a line left and then they tried to just hit tab to get it over. That's, that's incorrect. They just hit double space. I mean, I'm sorry, center. Okay, so look, notice the difference between this paper and um, this, this paper. This paper, the author, Henry, Joseph Henry, the sides look really clean, okay? Uh, while this other paper, if you notice, it's all like a mountain range. Look at all that. It's like curved and stuff. Okay. Now, Joseph's is like this because he has justify. Justify is selected. Okay. This person's, Hillary's, is like this because she has a line left. Okay. Now, technically, this is correct. Uh, MLA only requires left. Uh, left is required, but you can also do justify, okay? Um, so she won't get any points off. But like to me, though, the aesthetic of this is just much improved when, when justify is selected, okay? Watch. Oh, yeah. That's nice, okay. Then, when there are problems, you can tell that it has to do with the formatting here. There's errors there. There was purposeful um, deletion or addition, okay? And then you realize, oh, okay. Also, this person did not indent their paragraphs, which is part of the problem as well. There's no indentions. Well, like every paragraph needs to begin indented. They need to be indented. So that's a problem. Okay, also if you notice, look, when I did the formatting, Turns out this person did not uh, insert all of their actual um, page numbers. It's not consistent throughout the whole thing. So the formatting is all kind of messed up. Okay. And that's immediately going to make points go down majorly. All right. Work cited is off. There's no, uh, there's all these additional spaces between. Okay, we have two sources. They shouldn't be highlighted. I don't care if it was like copied. Uh, they should not be highlighted. And I don't, let's see if I can clear this out. There we go. Start all over. Okay, those, those are done. Let's see. This is typed in Times in Roman 12. So we're going to do... Twelve times New Roman. We need to double space it. Okay. And now we need to do hanging and dents. So the first line of, of, of the citation should be all the way to the left, but then the second lines should be indented. And third line. Now when you when you try to indent it and you hit tab, the whole thing is pushed over. The way you, which I've already demonstrated this, the way that you indent the second line is the backspace. So your cursor is here. And now hit tab. Boom. Moves it over. And then here, if I click here and hit tab, it's all messed up. So instead, I click on the line that I want to indent. 
I hit the backspace once, and then I hit tab twice or three times. Now, with these webs, with these, with with a URL, it might do this underline thing, which you can just if you just highlight the underline part, you can un underline it. See, look, it just takes some cosmetic working, y'all. Okay. But we're academically shallow. It should be that way. Again, this needs to be indented. So I click here. And then I do backspace. So now my cursor is there. And I hit tab. This right here can act that the third line can actually fit up here. So I'm on my cursor there and hit delete. Now one more problem. One more problems, actually, y'all. We're excited to be. Capital T. What is happening there? I want to clear it. All right. The way you clear, if, if, if there's like weird formatting stuff happening, you highlight uh, what you want to change, and then you go up here to this erase, and that takes out all formatting. Now you have to realign it. You have to redo everything sometimes, but oh well. You got to do what you got to do to make it correct. Everything should be in uniformity. There we go. Now look, N, H. Those are not in correct order. This H1 needs to come first. It needs to be in alphabetical order. H comes before N. Okay. So now, this is correct. Uh, That works that page is correct. Swank is still not present on every page as it as it should be. Okay, so that's a problem. Um, and we have these old chunks in between that, that need to be fixed. Okay, here we go. Okay, starting to look more like an essay. All right, we need to get this thing all the way up here. There we go. Okay, now let's just go back to um, inserting our page numbers. What you're doing here, but I like it. Um, we're going to insert our page numbers here. So, uh, click here, and then um, page numbers, up a page, right inside. What's, what's this person's last name? Their fake last name, Swain. Okay. This uh, I don't know why it's there. It's up there. That does not look good, but you know what? Uh, we'll cut that one as a loss. At least it appears on every page. Okay. So, all right. So that is uh, essentially how it needs to be formatted. Okay. Y'all need to kind of make sure that you, that's like one of the most important things I'm looking at is your MLA formatting. You are expected to go into 1102 knowing how to format correctly. Um, in fact, there is a quiz uh, the very first week of 1102 that will require you to uh, demonstrate that you can um, correctly set up an MLA page, okay? And if you do not do it correctly, then uh, you will um, not be able to do the work that is set for the class, all right? So it is very serious. You got to make sure that you are that all your stuff is at the collegiate level. You know, I mean, this is college. Listen, high school is mandatory until you're 18. College is not mandatory. Okay, it's uh, it very much is a um, you make it well, you stay in. Um, and if you don't, there's then it might not be the right option for you. Okay. 
make sure that that we get everything right and that we are setting things up. And look, um, let's see here. Underwriting, during this link right here, it sends you over to the Learning Success Center. And here you can try to work with a tutor, okay? And they can try to help you out with your formatting and all that. I highly recommend. All right, y'all. Uh, I want to end it here. If you have any questions, concerns, send me an email. Okay. Y'all take it easy. All right. It, it's feeling great outside. Feels so good. I'm here. I got I got my mandolin. Okay. It it's uh it is perfect fall weather. Yes. I hope that y'all are enjoying it and get outside. Maybe do some editing in the nice cool air with a cup of coffee. It'd be nice. Easy. Bye-bye.